Hi, everybody. Russ from My Hammers 11. I hope you're all safe and well. If you channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon so you're made aware of any time we put new content on. Um, we'd like to thank today's sponsors. Untuck it. Check the uh, description um, for more out about them. What's really cool about their shirts, to Untuck It shirts, are they're, they're made to be uh, untucked, so they're designed that way. So for me, I'm a quite short guy, but I like my shirts untucked, so it's quite cool. Um, and also for the more rotunded of us, for that lockdown body, which probably didn't come out the way we wanted it to, um, they've got lots of different sizes, so check them out. Today's guest, we have someone very special, very special. So special, in fact, that I have moved my recording stuff from my garage into my friend Colin Cooper's, well, you, you can't call it a garage because it's not a garage. It's a pub. It's a pub he's converted during lockdown. I do a little swivel as well because he want to show it off. But we're in the Cooper's Inn all the way from Raynham. I mean, sorry, South Horn Church. Sorry. So I don't want to don't, don't wanna bugger up Colin's, uh, Colin's price in his house um, from South Horn Church because of this one man we're interviewing today. As I said, um, we've had Matt Lorenzo on a few weeks ago and you might have watched Ray's... Um, uh, program blaze tv about sicily obviously ray's currently living in sicily so i thought let's bring back some nostalgia the uh you know ray winston talking about west ham in a pub that's pretty much got every box ticked for me so uh that's why we're here man i little i do a swivel because otherwise colin will hate me but he's done this all himself ray look at all this look at this he's got all the all the optics he's got the old chopper remember that oh it's mint it's mint isn't it it's good isn't yeah. it and he's done all that, yeah. and he, he's barred himself. What are, the today, like? what are the prices like in there? Do you know what? They're quite reasonable, especially if you're on your own. Um, but he's even yeah. got, the, got, the, got the peanuts, got some peanuts for later on. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's barred himself today. So uh, so we can do it socially distance, all the, following all the guidelines, no one moans. But uh, how are you, Mr. Lovely. Winston? How are you, mate? I'm oh, oh, fine, thank you, Russ. Um, I got caught here in March. I've got here three days later there in lockdown, and I can think of worse places to have a lockdown. Too it's right. been blinding, so there's plenty of room here. And they've done, they've done it really well out here, actually. You know, they, they locked all the towns down, so there was a bit of freedom. Um, it's actually worse now. They've, they've started lockdown again, as they have in the UK. Yes. So I'm, I'm planning to come back to England in November, and I was going to drive. But if they close the borders in France which they should have done years ago, and in Spain, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, I, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to drive, I might have to fly, so, but I like, I enjoy the, I enjoy the drive, you know, yeah, you see I like places, yeah. you meet people, but, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens, we'll see. anyway, I, yeah. I want to be home for Christmas. Yeah, exactly, and Sicily's a lovely yeah. place anyway, isn't it, it's a beautiful place. Yeah, it's good people here and all, yeah, yeah we, staunch people, huh? yeah, we, um, we've got our own West Ham, our own West Ham club in the town here, I've, I've converted everyone. That's fair to say. I've got face masks. I West Ham face masks and shirts and everything. The local team, we've got all the training kit. So we're, we're, um, we're spreading the word. It's like the gospel. That's good. That's what we like. Yeah. And I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't put anything past you, Ray, to do that anyway, to be honest. So wherever you go, you'll yeah. infiltrate the West Ham lot. But uh, I know we, we did... Do you, know, um, do you know I was in Mauritius once? I yeah. was in Mauritius before the World Cup in South Africa with a load of the boys... And there's a West, you can't believe it, in the middle of the island, there's a West Ham fan club. It's a building with West Ham United on the side in Mauritius. So we're worldwide, aren't we? Oh, it's mental. We're international. Well, with, with this yeah. channel, we've been, I've been interviewing, I've been lucky enough to interview lots of people and um, loads yeah. of like the American hammers and all the different groups and whether it's West Coast, yeah. East Coast, Central, we've interviewed... Uh, the Indian Hammers. Um, we've got uh, a yeah. guy from Hong Kong coming up this week. It's meant, honestly, I yeah. didn't realise how big our... There's, there's, a big, there's a big club in... Um, there's a big club house of, of West Ham fans in Dublin. Yes. As well. Yeah, we had a few of the you Dublin know, Hammers. Dublin yeah. branch. Scandinavian yeah, Hammers. The Scandinavian yeah, Hammers. Yeah, well, uh, Vikings. We love a Viking, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> Oh. And it's brilliant and that's why i love it and it's it's you don't realize how big obviously i've i, I live in all church so i'm not like you know I'm 20 minutes away from the ground but now it's like you know you see these guys who you know they might not 
ever come over to London Stadium, but they're just passionate. Yeah. And it's it's so nice to it's sort of it reinvigorates you. You know, you've been so, yeah. we've been beaten down for a West Ham fan too often and listen to these guys and their stories and stuff. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. It's really, 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 really good, man. But uh no, yeah. yeah. And I can totally understand your your appeal with uh Sicily. Um I remember doing went to a day trip in Capri on a cruise. Oh, yeah. lo- oh beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah, lovely. I almost lost yeah, my nice. wife. Almost lost my wife to a lemon yeah. lemon shop seller who propositioned yeah. her. Yeah, but he was yeah. about eighty. Really they are. They? He was about eighty five, and I could see my wife doing the calculations how long till she can get the life insurance. You can see us. You can see it. But she changed her mind yeah. and came back to Warren Church with us. Although she doesn't let us forget it. But um, anyway, I, I, it's brilliant chatting to you, Ray. I really, really appreciate it. You know, when I started the channel, I, I had a had a list, a hit list of who I wanted to get on the channel. And uh, number well, one, oh bless you, was the who one. Was that Perry was, was the one pound fish man? No, no, no. <laughs> you, were, you were number one, right? You were number one, man. And we've had Perry on. We've had Perry on. Yeah, we've had. Uh, I know you have. Yeah. He's, he's a good mate at one pound. Lovely good guy. Boy. Yeah, and we've had Jamie, um, Jamie from uh, from EastEnders as well, Jamie Borthwick. So yeah, we've done well. We've yeah. got lots of ex players, and yeah, it's lovely. lovely. And uh, you know, everyone, it's nice community. It's nice to look back at West Ham, isn't it? There's always something going on. Yeah. With West yeah. Ham, whether it's you know, whether it's owners it's throughout ever, whether it's owners or players or whatever, it's nice to go back and have a chance to think um, and, and look back at memories and stuff, and that's why people like it. So uh, it's all good. So for you, Ray, we you know we obviously we know you're a West Ham fan, but why? Yeah. Why is West Ham your club? What I mean, you know, why are you? Well, a West Ham I, lived in, I lived in Caster Park Road, which is Plaster. That's yeah. where I come out. I was born in Eton Hospital, but really I was brought up in the, in Plaster. So. It was a no-brainer, really. You know, it, it, was, it was 1957 I was born. It was, you know, we was coming through as a club, I guess, at the time. My my uncle, my great-uncle, Uncle Frank, used to play for West Ham in 1923. Brilliant. You know, and uh, Frank Richardson. And they, he was bought, I think, from Reading. And he was the first £1,000 player, I think. It was the year after we, we played uh, Bolton in the Cup and got beat in the first Wembley final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was, it was in the family, you know. Was, even though my, my dad was an Oxton man, and I guess he wasn't a great football fan, you know, and if he had been, it would probably been Arsenal, being an Oxton boy, you know. But um, thank God we lived in Plasto, so I used to go to the games with him there, you know. He used to take me to football there. Otherwise, I might have been a gooner. Oh, God, God. Can you Could, imagine that? Well, Could you imagine? I mean, you know, how many, uh, how many Premier League, you know, the Invincibles, um, you know, the uh, the Premier League titles. Oh, could you imagine? No, but it don't mean nothing. Too much success is no good for you. Do you know it's true? Someone mentioned, someone spoke to me the other day, one of the fans, and said, "Look, I'd, I'd never want to win the Premier League title because I think it would change us." And I agree. West Ham fans are a unique bunch of people, aren't they? Um, And. (laughs) <laughs> and, and they are but it's like you know they sort of three or four times a season we turn up and yeah. you know for some reason we don't know why and you know luckily the last few games we have turned up but um and that's well, what it is you, know what? When we scored that, you say that and it's quite true you know it's like a cup final. when we got that equalizer against when lancini got that wonder goal against tottenham yeah i was literally it was right the last minute and i was sitting and watching it to tell you the front room and I just stood there for 10 minutes after with my arms up in the air, <laughs> with my mouth open and the chip hanging out like that. And I couldn't move. It was, like, it was like winning the World Cup, you know, yeah, it was. which we've already done. Which we've already done indeed. I know what you mean. So I, yeah. When that goal came in, my mother-in-law ran in thinking I'd turn my ankle um, because yeah. it was like, because she never heard that sort of level of excitement coming out of my mouth. But uh, yeah. particularly watching West Ham. Yeah. But no, it's uh, it's good. And Moisey seems to have got a tune out of the guys recently. So uh, long may that yeah. continue, well, mate. You know, what, watching, watching the Newcastle game, the first game of the season, you know, and I was absolutely gutted with that game, with the performance and everything. And, if you looked at the players at half time when they came back onto the pitch there, they looked distraught. They looked yeah. like they were finished, you know? And it and I thought this is going to be one of them seasons again where there's going to be, I don't know, it looks an unsettled team. It looked like the dressing room wasn't together. And then we played Arsenal and we didn't win the game. But I tell you what, we, we were the better side. Yeah. And unlucky not to get three points, let alone one point out of the game. 
So, and there was a little bit of hope there. The defence looked like it was playing together. And I thought maybe that's just a one-off. And then the next game, uh, I think it was Wolves, wasn't it, the next game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I believe it was. Uh, and uh, and we turn up. And, yeah. and then Leicester. Yeah. And then you start thinking, well, Moyes has actually sorted that team out. And there's, there's a lot of uh, noise coming from the dressing room now saying that the players are very, very happy with the way things are going with yeah. Moyes. They want him to stay. Um, and we look like a team. We, you know, I'm not saying we, we're the best team in the league or anything like that. But at the same time, it, it looks like we've got boys who are willing to play and run and, and, and know where they're playing. That's the thing. Instead of just, you know, you've got an individual like we had in Anderson who, who yeah. really was, you know, I, I was From- gutted about him because he looked like he had some class yes. about him. Yeah. But he just didn't look like he had any of that, you know? Where we've got boys now that are playing like this little Bowen oh. and Antonio, Mikel Antonio, he's got to get an England call up, man. He's got to, isn't he? I mean, he's got have it. you ever seen a boy who puts in? I think the last person we had to put in a, a session like him every game was Scotty Parker. You know, yeah, as someone yeah, yeah. who really was under the 20% every game. And he's an handful. Kid's an handful. And he's now out for a month. And it looks like we're going to have to change the way we play again. But yeah. but you know what? If there's that sort of um, that sort of vibe going on in the dressing room, then so be it. You know, bring it on. We're, and there's a great totally. test this weekend with Liverpool. So yeah, no, we'll totally. see what happens. No, you're totally right, man. Love to go and do them, wouldn't you? Oh. Love to turn them over. Especially oh. if like Van, I mean, Van Dyke's not playing and Fabinho's out. And it's like, it's frustrating because if, if Antonio was there, you'd think, God, he would be absolutely chomping at the bits that are going against us. Well, do you know what? I got a t- with me with Van Dyke, don't, don't get me wrong, he's a, he's a terrific player, Van Dyke. Yeah. But no one puts any pressure on him. No. He's, no. A, he's a little bit of a poser. He's, he's like, I look like I'm a good footballer and I moved the ball really well. And he can pass the ball and he is a good player, but I never see anyone going crunch, no. livening, me, livening me up, you know, giving it him. And yeah. I think Antonio would have smashed into him a little bit, like Carroll would have done, you know. Yes. Andy Carroll was, you know, I'll get it for Andy Carroll because I've, I believe he was a, he was an handful and I, and I think, he, you know, without the injuries, I think he went in so hard, Andy, and he's a big man. Yeah, he got hurt too much, you yeah. know. And I think if he'd have stayed fit, I think he'd have been a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous centre forward. You know? Yeah, no, totally. And you're totally right. I mean, I just think, you know, I, I, I can't think of any defender apart from Van Dijk, the only one I can think of in the Premier League who'll be able to keep up with Anderson, yeah. uh, uh, keep up Antonio, just because he bullies yeah. them. I can't think, you know, and he's just like. Because he don't know what he's going to do, so how's, how's the defender going to know what he's going to do? You know, I love players like that, and it's you don't want to meet him down a dark alley. Do you? <laughs> nah, yeah. you don't want to meet him his Lamborghini because he's uh, he crashed it last Christmas. Do you remember in a snowman costume? But nah, and he, see, he's, he seems a good lad as well, isn't it? And and he's he's grafted yeah. from, from all the way up. And I love players like Vardy yeah. and people like that who are grafted. And it hasn't been given yeah. to him. been put just into academy and you know first you know just you know taken straight into the league. But uh, and he just seems more. He just seems to have his team of fighters now. People he's brought in the fighters the backroom staff seem to be all fighters and yeah we're yeah. scared i think we're scared teams now you know we score from corners when do we ever score from corners for the last like three or four years you know and uh, we're a bit nasty every time we got caught, like, those are screams yeah. when we got caught, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'd never hit the first man would we we'd never hit the first man but it is no, a... because you know they were going to do us on the breakaway so yeah. you, you get a corner you know they're going to score <laughs> it's so true it's so true and you said I mean like someone like you know someone like Suchek or whatever and and, and you know, Antonio we're just being oh, a bit more um, not we're just nastier now do you know what I mean we just got a bit about us we're not a pushover yeah. anymore now which is what and people we're see. still also playing really good football yeah we're scoring you know we're playing all right you know and I like the way we're knocking the ball about mm. and you know many teams in, in, in the premiership you know how it's going to go. It's going to go up one wing. It's going to come back down that wing. Go across to the other side. Go mm. back up. You know, Liverpool at least knocked the long ball across field. Yeah. And we've started. You know, we've started hanging back, holding back, getting the defence right, and hitting them on the break. And that's the way we're we're kind of playing at the moment. Because you, what I've realised, and I'm sure I'm sure most of the fans have realised, is you don't have to have most of the possession to no. win a game of football anymore. No. You know, all this thing is, you must have possession, bollocks. You know, you hold back and you hit them, let them come on and then counter-punch. Yeah. Oh, stood, you know. 
And I love it. I love all that. Oh, it's brilliant, isn't it? Because you just know, you can just soak up the pressure. And you know you've got that outlet. And it's like, you, yeah, you keep playing it around the back. Yeah. All we need is like five minutes of that. And Antonio, you know, one-on-one with your defender and you ain't got a chance, mate. And yeah, yeah it's working. But we're so going to have to play a little bit different now, I are. guess, because you've yeah, got... apparently. Now you, you have Ella up front, who's not that kind of runner. No. Who's more of a footballer. Uh, and maybe, you know, you you might push little Bowen in a little bit more. I don't know. And maybe yeah. Yamalenko will go out on the wing, you know? Yeah. Which I'm not averse to because I quite like Yamalenko. Mm. I, I think he's quite a class act, actually. Yeah, he's he's livening himself up. Yeah, he is. You know? And he didn't play well the other day, but he was expect his wife was expecting a baby and had a baby about three hours later. So, no, you know, everyone can... More important. Exactly, more important. For his... But also, we've got the... What's up? Well, well, you know, we, his wife might be having a baby, yeah. but you know, you are part of West Ham after all, kid. Get your finger out. What, what are we paying you for? Exactly. But I mean, you got the they got the boy Barami as well. Barami, you know, side Barami, he, yeah. he, he might come on, yeah. and he looks, yeah, he looks like a West Ham player. Do you know what I mean? Like maverick He's sort of player. Man. Yeah, he looks lively. We love a lively player like that. You know, skillful. You know, we've got a lot of quick players yeah. like Antonio. But, you know, he's got pace as well, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, we, so we'll see. I haven't seen the kid, much of the kid, but no. But maybe it's the time for him to come on now. You know, if, you, if you've lost that, lost that kind of pace with Antonio, yeah. maybe it's time for him to come on and see what he can do. Yeah, and it's a different type of game. As you said, if we're playing, as you said, because we're playing, you know, might be playing Haller up front, or, or Antonio might not be injured. We don't know. You know, there might be, you know, there's, there's a report that he might not be injured. We don't know. That's the thing. So we'll see. Oh, we'll see. Boy. But whatever, we'll, the boys will put, yeah. put the effort in. And that's might what we'll be a ploy. Might be a ploy, yeah. a clever, a clever tactic by Davy Moyes. But I would, wouldn't you? It's like if he's if he's the main focal. So yeah, he's out for six weeks. Liverpool then play all their whole de- the, all their defensive stuff, everything with having Haller up front, and then Antonio comes up, he buggers them all up. You know why yeah. not? Yeah. Why not, clever man? But we'll see, we'll see. And as long as they carry on, as long as they put the effort in, that's all we care about, man, isn't it? As long as they put their Absolutely. you know well, pay you for know the what? shirt. You can't ask for no more than it. No. Because, any, you know, anyone in the Premiership seems to, like they can win a game there. True. You know, there's, there's no easy games, is it? No. No, you're right. It's not. And every team's turning over every other team. And it seems like defences are now null and void. You know, it seems that it's we can outscore you, which yeah. is great, which is entertaining, I suppose. But it's frustrating when, you yeah. know, but, you know, we'll see. And that's the thing we just don't know where we stand, do we, Ray? You've, I mean, you've been there since the uh, late, you know, the late 80, late 50s, rather. Anything can happen. Right? Anything can happen with West Ham. Absolutely. Nothing changes. No, nothing changes. <laughs> doesn't matter where we play. Doesn't matter what badge we've got on. Doesn't matter who's, who's putting on the yeah. shirt. There's something in here about West Ham where everyone's got to... Uh, and I think that's why people like it. You know, a lot of people have West Ham as their second team because, you know... We're like that. We're different fans, you know. We are. We we we're hardened, you know. I liken it to when yeah. you're uh, when you learn to play the guitar. You have to like play really hard to get your fingers all like calloused and get extra skin on your fingers. So you don't. Know. That's like us. We've got this hard skin, hard exterior. Yeah, we know we will lose to Burnley, but we know Man United well, are coming next. Yeah. Yeah. It's just when it, well, if you was a, if you was a a Man United Liverpool fan and, and grown up knowing success all the time. Yeah. In the real world, when you get kicked in the nuts, exactly. you don't know how to come back. But as a West Ham fan, you've had the pain yes. all your life. So you can deal with the world. Exactly. It's a great way of looking at it, isn't it? It's character building, isn't it? It's character building. That's what I so tell my Don't come and be a West Ham fan. Come to the dark side. Yeah, Hurrah! come to come yours. Come to the dark side. Join us. Join us. But yeah. Um, so... As I said, Ray, what we do on this channel is we, we, we find out where West Ham family, we talk about West Ham, but also we do your Hammers 11. So the idea is everyone we've had on the channel, um, bar, I think Mr. Redknapp didn't do an 11, and and Mr. Bishop didn't do an 11. Um, oh, no. Bish didn't because he's such a nice bloke, he didn't want to um, piss anyone off, he didn't he, pick in well, his team. Exactly. We well, love Bish. Well, I'm all <laughs> I'm horrible. I'm going to pick everyone. You know? So, as I said, we're picking 11. The only rule is you have to be alive to a scene and play. To be honest, Ray, no disrespect, you're an experienced fan, so you have quite a, a nice well, on a bit, yeah. experience. We call them experienced fans. That's all right. Oh, that's the, that's that, the yeah. political way. Um, so, you've got quite a nice spread. So, uh, be interested to see what your thoughts are, your players. So, um, we'll start off in goal. So, who's in goal for the Winston 11? The, the 11 everyone wants well, to be in. I, I, it's long and hard, but it, it wasn't too difficult when we it's Parksy, Phil yeah. Parks. Um, you know, Mervyn Day was was terrific for a time, and there was yeah. Ferguson years ago when I was a kid. 
But I'd have to go with Phil Parks, you know. I actually played against him once. He was like one of them spiders, big spiders in the web. Wherever you put the ball up, I'm not saying I was the greatest person in the world, but, but his arms just went up and you just yeah. couldn't beat him, you know. It was unbelievable. And I thought he was a fabulous keeper for us, season in and season out. So, yeah. Parks are yeah. And he's just turned 70, turned 70 over the Is lockdown. Is he really as old as that, Phil? Turned 70 over oh, lockdown. He grew his hair back, especially for his celebrations. But none on his head, but all yeah. down his back. Yeah, sort of all thing. down there. The Cossack hair was back. So that was <laughs> time about that. Top, top bloke. Right, we'll put, put Parksy in. Uh, what we, yeah. we playing for at the back, Ray? What are we doing? Well, over the, this is tough for me because, you know, from Billy Bonds, Ray Stewart, yeah. Alvin Martin. I'd have to have Alvin in the middle. Yeah. I think... Yeah, and uh, uh, and then I've got Julian Dixon, Ray Stewart, and uh, the God Billy Bonds. But so I'd have to go Bonzi. Yeah, in there, and there's no disrespect to Julian or, um, but I could put Ray on the other side, I suppose. Yeah, but um, I'd have to have Bobby Moore in there with any show of that, and then <laughs> you somewhere you'd have to fit in Martin Peters slipping through because he was the ghost, you know, and how can you leave him out? Yeah. So I think at the back, the back two would be probably Bonds, and then I'd have the other side, Tuffy, Ray Stewart. I'd have probably on the on the right, I'd probably put Martin Peters, Alvin Martin in the middle. Yeah. And I'll put on the left, Alan Devonshire. God. Because Devo, I know I've left old Frank Lampard out there, but. <laughs> because they were a great partnership, Frank and Alan Devonshire. On the, yeah. you know, but I can't, I can't leave Bonzi out. I've got to leave no. Bonzi in there. So I, I, I put Alan Devonshire, nice, just a little bit further back, but yeah. coming through with him runs. Oh. And then yeah. I've got to make way up front, you know. And <laughs> you know, you're talking about centre forwards. Yeah. You know, we had Jeffers, McAvenny, yeah. and Cotty. You know, Pop Robson. The old Robson. Yeah. Um, you know, and one who never fulfilled his potential because of injuries, uh, the kid Dean Ashton. Definitely. Who I thought would have probably been one of the great centre forwards, you know, like a oh. shearer in the end, because his Definitely. touch on the ball was fantastic. Mm. And his running off the ball was great as well. And But so he didn't play enough games, so I've got to leave him out. I've got to put Jeffrey up front. Yeah. I've got to, you know? Yeah. And then I'll, oh, the other man is the man behind me, I guess, is Di Canio. Oh, you've got to put the man in. You know? Yeah, especially when you, you know, uh, you're in Sicily as well. So I'm, leaving out, I'm leaving out Frank and I'm leaving out uh, Cotty, you know, from the great 80s sides. You know, David Cross. Oh, the original psycho. Yeah. yeah. That's so, good. And I'm also leaving out in the middle of Scott Parker, who, yeah. you know, is not known so much for his skill, but. I mean, what an injury! What a what a player, you Brilliant. know. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got as my front two. I've got Di Canio and and I've got Jeff Hurst. You know, that's, that's um, not too. on the wings. Go yeah. on, it's because you go back to John Sisson. Yeah, you know? John Sisson. I mean, yeah. leaving out in the middle of Alan Seeley. Remember, I mean, in the sixties, Alan Seeley when we won the. Cup with his cup. Yeah. He scored two goals. At he did. Yeah, Brian he did. Deer. Yeah, Brian Deere. You know, Alan Taylor. You know, we've had some really terrific we have. forwards yeah. over the years, you know. Um, but I've got I've got to stick with Di Canio because of his flair and he could he could do things magic out now with Paul Goddard's another one, you know. <laughs> Glass player, you know. But I'm trying to think of the wingers. And I guess over the years we haven't really been renowned for. No, we, no, we tend to have, yeah, I mean, we do, yeah, I mean, even the mod, the modern era, not so much now, isn't it? Because the wing, I think wingers are just like something which no one plays now, do they? They play these inverse, you know, yeah. in, so left think plays on the right, right. Oh. You know, John Sissons, I can't say Sissons all of a sudden, otherwise, maybe I'm half pissed them last night, I don't know. But it's, it's just trying to find, a, find those, the wingers that we had, yeah. and, and I can't. I can't think of anything. Well, when I, well, I, I maybe played, I've got a, 
Well, I play four. Well, four give me some clues. Well, I play. Well, well I I did a four four two because I'm I'm you know I, yeah. I doing this channel. I've learned things like inside well, maybe, half. Maybe what I would do then. Maybe what I would do then. I I leave one to go wide, like to Kenny out and go wide, and Jeff would go because Jeff was a great runner off the ball, dragging people. Yeah, and maybe then that's where you you bring in your brookie. Yeah, you know, as a as a forward midfielder. Yeah. So you got him and Devin who are the same side, but and then maybe I put little Frank behind them. Yeah, little Frankie Lampard. Yeah, you know, just coming in, you've got that diamond shape thing, and maybe mm -hmm. leave the wingers out. Maybe because maybe. you'd be going from the middle. If you've got Brooklyn and Devonshire running it, yeah, I don't think you fucking need. Well, yeah, yeah. If, you we, know, so if we had like if we had Devonshire before the injury, he could drift out and still mm. wink, couldn't he? And and just give that pace down yeah, the wing. I mean, yeah. oh, that's my eleven. I love it, man. <laughs> it's I can tell I mean, you've toiled. I think we'd probably win the European Cup with that side, you know. Well, I think also on the bowling green at London Stadium. If they stayed the... away from the pub, if they yeah. stayed at the pub. Well, that's it. I've been, I've been talking. Obviously, we talked to lots of lots of ex players, and even like, even Trevor Sinclair. You know, so when we had Trevor, oh, we had love yeah. Trevor, massive fan of the channel, and um, we had him on, and he said that season when we finished fifth, we could have, we should have won that year, we could have won the title yeah. of the year, but Harry let them go out on a piss every Tuesday night down the, down the town gate. <laughs> And and wouldn't and wouldn't have um, and wouldn't have the training on on the Wednesday so they could have a, a night out. But yeah, actually, you reckon Harry Shepherd you quit along with him as well? Y y possibly, possibly. Well, that's what that's what, Ra <laughs> that's what Razor said as well. He said exactly the same thing. He said, you know, we had that yeah. where we did a, you know, we'd go out, we'd go to the oh, what was the pub around the Chatterway? Was it Tollgate? We'd go to the Tollgate, then we'd go up, up oh, London, and uh, and yeah. yeah, Harry wouldn't. Uh, Harry wouldn't mind, but he said, we'd, then we wouldn't do a sneaky drink on a Wednesday or Thursday. We knew he'd go out on a Tuesday night. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, different, yeah, different time, right. man. Different times, isn't it? It was, it was it a different times. You're quite right. And I mean, I'm just sort of another player I've left out, and a lot, a lot of West End. I mean, a lot of West End fans have got the ump with a uh, with a uh, um, with young Frank Lampard, yeah. you know, and uh, God, you know, get over it. You know, he's been a tremendous player, and Paul Lynch, another one. Yeah, they, they brilliant all got the player. Ump. Yeah. You know, and for me, Incy, that's it. Incy was a tremendous player. You know, yeah. I remember. I, I remember one night. I think we we done Liverpool at, at a night game. I think we done them something like four one or three one. And I think Incy got a couple, two or three. He got. Yeah. What, what a player, you know. So tenacious. what a player. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame how you know. And then, and then that sort of because of what happened, you know, and obviously he regrets. I mean, modern day time, modern day, but you know what I mean. Sort of being like Defoe and yeah. stuff who have gone out and said, "Yeah, I made a mistake oh, there. Maybe yeah. I shouldn't have done." Yeah, they're just badly advised, isn't yeah. it? And because of that, their their career's been yeah. time. It's a bit like Frank Senior. His career's been, you know, he's not revered in the same way that Bobby is and Billy is, and he should be because he's played yeah. just as many That's games true. as them. You know what I mean? But because of Frank's yeah. Junior, and because of you know yeah. when he was coach and everything they said you know he's he's, he's been tainted and that, that's that's something i really want to see if we can rebalance a bit you know i mean same as bonzo i mean bonzo only really got recognized yet last year really again when they named the stand yeah. after him do you know what i mean it's um yeah it's good to look you know we need to know, he's an actual gentleman as well i was yeah. lucky enough to meet the over over yeah. at upton park yeah and then i've seen him at the new stadium but but for me um he's an absolute gentleman he's in the same mold as the bobby moores and that you yeah. know you know, remember that team? They were like pirates when they yeah. played. They all had beards and long hair, and it was Graham Padded and all that. Yeah, you know? I saw and the they pictures. Used to like charge forward at the same time. You know, it was ridiculous. But it was a great uh, Alan Taylor up front with his Rochdale haircut. You know, yeah. it was like rat towns, like he like an old skinhead bird, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and, uh, <laughs> they, I don't know. There was just something very exciting about watching them then, you know, because they, they were they were like marauding pirates, all charging at the goal, you know. Yeah, and particularly like with that when we played, was, was it Fulham in the in the FA Cup? And it was, you know, they were yeah. the stylish ones, and we were like, you know, the pirates, so to speak. It was like it was quite funny because yeah. watching a lot of that clipping, and obviously, you know, when when the FA Cup mattered, do you know what I mean? When they actually the whole day was dedicated to the FA Cup, and you know, obviously BBC would follow one team, and ITV would follow the other team, and yeah, watched a lot of that yeah. coverage recently because uh, that is funny. But you're right, yeah. and 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 that was a that was a, an amazing. You know, I was obviously wasn't around. For for that unfortunately you know i didn't get on board till 
early 90s so actually bonzo was the manager right. at the time so right. um yeah I'm, I'm a relatively young pup in comparison but you know, uh, a, a funny story about that day I, I was there 1975 was it 75 yep. i think it was yep and um i was standing behind uh, the goal and i was standing next to two geordie boys two newcastle boys yeah. who were west Ham fans and uh, they, they had a bag of Newcastle brown ale in it. They were West Ham fans, but they'd come from Newcastle. Yeah. And we were drinking beers with them and watching the game and all that. But it was the one game, and I, I could honestly say this, and I don't know whether anyone else felt the same, but um, I didn't mind losing that game. If we'd have lost that game, it wouldn't have worried me yeah. because of Bobby Moore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, but Bobby was, as a kid growing up through the 60s, Bobby was a god. Yeah. You know, and still is in my eyes. He was a, he was he was a great ambassador for not only the sport but but for our area and yeah, where totally. we come from. You know, that someone can mix with kings and people and talk on a level where and, and have respect because all you respect is from where we came from. I, I guess all we talked about was boxing, birds, football, and gangsters. You know, yeah. and then all of a sudden this guy came along, Bobby Moore. Who you could look up to, and you know he was a literally a god to us, you know. Yeah. And uh, so, if we'd have lost that final, we never. So it's easy to say, you know. Yeah. Like, but I wouldn't have minded losing it, you know. But we if didn't. It meant, we if it meant that he would be lifting the cup as well, in it. So. And you're right. Oh, I mean, you know. was, yeah, such a such a gent. And obviously, you know, we, I said we had we had Matt on the other week, and he was talking about Bobby because obviously he did that yeah. documentary, which is which is an incredible documentary, which is obviously being replayed and stuff at the moment. And um, yeah. yeah, and obviously stories you've had. Obviously, you had people like Pikey had come on, and and he's spoke about Bobby, and you know, just how he would he would like what he would do is that the, when the team were coming into the game, he'd obviously be one of the first mm. ones to park up, and he'd basically shake every team every of his teammates hand as they walked into the into the stadium to say have a good game you know and things like that it's just yeah. class class man yeah. class man and uh yeah, I, so met she- in, I met him in the Hilton Hotel at Wembley uh uh after he retired and he was very ill at the time yeah and he was doing a radio broadcast yeah on the game not a tv broadcast a radio broadcast yeah and he was ill he would been very very ill you know and uh and he really didn't know me from Adam, you know, and um, I think he was walking along with it was someone else. It might have been Jimmy Greaves, because I know I met Jimmy Greaves at the same night. But, but um, and I, I spoke to um, Bobby for about half an hour, 40 minutes. Uh, and he didn't know I was in films or anything like that. It, yeah. I was just a kid from the same area as him, you know. Sure. And we just had a conversation. And I think that's the kind of gentleman he was, you yeah. know. Um, fantastic. Fantastic man, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, to be honest, I've, I've been very fortunate the last five months to interview lots of ex-players, and they all just let yeah. and same as that, you know, they just get, all give you the time and make you seem like you're their mate. Do you know what I mean? It's like I've never yeah. met this yeah. guy, but you know, I mean, for me, yeah. it's it's a bit different. But for me, my my Bobby Moore was Pete Butler. It was really because <laughs> he was the first player I ever met. Um, because they used to do little birthday parties at West Ham for the kids. And I met yeah, him right. as my, and, and we interviewed him and he's, he's currently the Liberian national team manager. So, you know, where you're right. up, a, where you're up a mountain, yeah. he's in Liberia. He's in a, he's in George Weir's compound at the moment. And, um, right. and yeah, I was, he was, I was told that. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, he did say I had to make sure the uh, make sure the uh, computers all charged up in case the power goes. And I thought he was in like yeah, Yorkshire, well, uh, but no, he was in he's in yeah. Liberia. Bless him. But no, it's uh, well, uh, they're all great. Me. Yeah, he's a good man. And they, but they, they all know, talk- I, played at, I played at Wembley once against Bobby Moore before the Tottenham Coventry Cup final, and um, I, I kicked the ball. I kicked off, and I thought I'm going to have a run at goal at Wembley, and not uh, Bobby Moore's in front of me. I dropped his shoulder, went round him, and I ran about 20 yards before I realised I didn't have the ball. <laughs> he nicked the ball off me as I went past him. And then halfway through the second half, he went to me, uh, Mick Shannon had the ball, and he went, have a run, son. I went, what? He went, have a run. And he stepped forward, and I had a run, and Shannon put the ball over. I got the ball, crossed it, and Daley Thompson scored. Right? <laughs> but you, you, my point of it is I played against other ex-pros, and yeah. they take it very serious. Yeah. Well, you know, it's their business. Yeah, yeah totally. 
But Bobby, Bobby, even though I was just a kid who loved playing football, it's my my time of playing at Wembley. Yeah. And he let me let me have, have a your run. moment. Let me go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah do you know moment. what I mean? Class. I thought that was quite incredible and that was lovely, you know? Yeah, that's classy. And yeah, I mean, he's just yeah. a, he was a fantastic man by all accounts and yeah. everyone speaks so highly of him. It's, uh, you know, people have worked with him who, when he was, as he said, when he was at Capital Gold, we've had them on the channel mm. and, you know, how, how he'd go around making everyone a cup of tea. You know, the England yeah. the guy who's left the world, <laughs> left the world Cup who's shaking yeah. hands with the Queen is making me a, yeah. a brew. You know, it's, uh, no, it's brilliant. Yeah. And, you, know, all like, you know, anyone who wears a West Ham shirt, you know, obviously there's ones which stand out, but, you know, even the ones we don't like anymore now, you know, they're, they're, they're still part of our history and part of our fabric. And and, uh, yeah. and that's what's quite good about his channel because we get a chance for people to shine. So, you know, obviously yourself, you've you've, you've seen all, all the greats, you know, you, you know you've, you've ticked all the greats in terms of who you've picked. But for like people yeah. like me, like yeah, people like Ian Bishop and as a Trevor Sinclair and John Moncur and yeah. you know, even people, uh, the people with, uh, who are less experienced than us. It's, you know, I don't know, it's Paul Kincheski and it's uh, John Pantsil yeah. and, you know, everyone has their own and that's what's lovely because everyone has a chance to talk about them. So, um, yeah. yeah, brilliant. Ray, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you, man. I've loved every minute. Too, I've loved it. Thank lovely. you so much. I told you. I told you it alone, eh? <laughs> I won't do some holes then. Dig some holes. Oh, I'll dig some holes. I'm planting, yeah. <laughs> so I'll get me old gear on, slap, slap me on my boots, and then have a dig. Oh, how the other... I hurt my back last year, so it's really good. I'm, I'm trying to get back up a bit. Get yeah. myself all ready to go back to work if I'm lucky enough to get another job. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. it's funny enough. I suppose you'll be quite on it now. Are you going to start having well, a Well, yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to have, have a pint now. No, yeah, yeah. It's a bit early for me. But yeah, it's lunchtime, lunchtime pint. No, it's funny. Yes, it was. It must have been a sign, Ray, that this was going to happen because yesterday I switched on my phone and for some reason, yeah. Love, Honor, and Babe turned on. And I haven't seen that film for years <laughs> and it came on. And I was like, do you know what? That's a yeah. sign. That's a sign. I love one of my favorite films. But. Uh, oh, uh, anyway, thank you so much, Mr. Winston. Everyone will really, really appreciate uh, that. Russ, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's, it's always lovely to talk about West Ham, isn't it? And, isn't it? It's you know, the one the right Zoom... Some... Exactly. So it's the one Zoom call everyone wants to take who's a West Ham fan because they get to talk about West Ham rather than the rather than the business meeting. We talk about, about football for about two Absolutely. minutes, then you have to start talking. This is all about West yeah. Ham. So obviously, thank you. Right. And thank you to everyone who's been watching well, as well. Happy Come on, you irons. Good, the, luck, good luck against Liverpool. Just smash them. Give it yeah, up. Yeah, smash them. Although we'll probably put this up. Oh, no, I'll put this up on Saturday. But so we, so right. we haven't lost all, all one to them. So it's all right. Well, but, it's uh, like we ain't got no point in the face. I don't want none of that. No, I'm going to put it up before, Ray, just to make sure. All right. So we're all right, man. But uh, right. thank you so much all for right, watching. Sir. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands from me and Ray. Come yes, on, you irons. Safe, See you again very, very soon. Take care, everyone.